Christians hate poor people, sex workers, and are racist. Today, I respond. These intros are so weird. Today feels like a great day to remind us all that Jesus was brown and hung out with sex workers and poor people. So if your religion isn't invested in the political and social liberation of those three identities, then... Girl, I have news for you. Okay, number one, I'm not a girl, I'm a man. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> it's funny to me that he mentions that Jesus is brown as if that's going to rattle some cages. That's going to offend me to my core. Oh no, Jesus was brown. It's like he thinks that I think that God was from the south and is white and has a southern accent and, and says, you Pharisees, you <laughs> you tax collect. It's like, oh, thou shalt not commit adultery as they say in the old word you know what i'm saying it's like no i don't i don't think that jesus had a southern accent and that doesn't offend me that he was brown maybe you like me have heard the stereotypes that christians they are racist and of course there are some whack jobs out there who are legitimately racist but those are people that haven't read the bible or they don't believe it look the bible teaches against racism there are plenty of verses that say okay look hey they're neither jew nor greek slave nor free free male nor female it's not about discriminating based on skin color it's about understanding that we're all creations of god and made in made with dignity and worth and and the fact that you, some people would get upset uh, be that jesus is brown or black or whatever um like they need to chill and they need to read the bible and the fact is their lifestyle of hatred towards other people is demonstrating that they're not actually a christian anyway Today feels like a great day to remind us all that Jesus was brown and hung out with sex workers and poor people. So if your religion isn't invested in the political and social liberation of those three identities, then... Girl, I have news for you. For some reason, every time he calls me a girl, I feel a, I feel a, just a desire to just, just, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm, I'm not a girl. I'm not, I'm not a girl. Okay, so he brings up two identities as he calls them, poor people and sex workers. So let's talk about poor people. Christians have been heavily invested in serving the poor for a long time. Not only are Christians some of the most generous people statistically, but we also operate out of the philosophy of giving out of the joy of our heart and generosity of our heart rather than through government force. True generosity is giving joyfully out of what we have already received, not petitioning the government to take from those that we think have too much. Could Christians be more generous towards the poor and care for them even better? Absolutely. But we also need to keep in mind that Christianity is the only foundation that gives us an understanding of how to care for the poor and why we ought to. You see, from an evolutionary atheistic standpoint, we are simply stardust bumping into stardust. You know the whole thing about survival of the fittest it's like why should i even help a poor person if it's not going to help me but we've evolved past that they say we've moved past that we're more evolved now we're we want to be good people that conscience within you that tells you you ought to serve those who are downtrodden and oppressed that is given to you by god god commands us to be generous to the poor on an individual level in proverbs 14 21 it says this whoever despises his neighbor is a sinner but blessed is he who is generous to the poor so yes, I agree with you, bro. We should care for the poor, but don't put the expectation on the government to do what the church has been called to do. The other group that he brought in were sex workers. Here's the thing. True liberation for sex workers is to get out. There is no honest sex trade. Exploitation, trafficking, and abuse run rampant. It doesn't cease to amaze me the gall of some of these people who proclaim that they care for the marginalized and oppressed, and yet they vie for this perverted practice. Many people are caught up in this lifestyle against their will, and we should be vying for their freedom and liberation to get out of there, not to set up protection so they can be exploited even more. Some people could get out, and yet they feel like they could never be forgiven. They're stuck in this cycle of shame, and that's exactly where we need to be proclaiming the goodness and grace of God the fact that we can be forgiven and made into a new creation. This guy on TikTok is misled. The crux of the issue is what does it mean to be liberated? Does it mean to be affirmed in our sin or to be free from it? And we ought to be calling people and helping people out of that cycle of sin into freedom and newness of life. I hope you guys got something from this video and enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your comments down below. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon that makes what I do possible. If you would like to to support what I'm doing and helping people follow Jesus daily, head to the link in my description and sign up. It would be a huge blessing to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. God bless.